Hello, I'm Omnisai, your Game Master, this evening here in my lair. Hello, Massive Darkness fanatics. It is I once more, Omnisai, here to show you a bit more of Massive Darkness. Now, in the first Massive Darkness, we did the tutorial, which was a relatively simple two-tile encounter. Uh, we ran through it with Siegfried here, our favorite dwarven psychopath. And for the most part, went pretty well. Uh, carved through the dungeon, and when it was all said and done, we uh, came through the other side with a healthy pile of treasure and some experience. We we're using the micro experience track to represent the ongoing campaign rather than the quick and fast rewards you would get from doing a uh, single encounter mode. So, as a result, the game is over, we move on to the next step. Because we survived, Siegfried goes back to town to recuperate and to uh, retool. So, as I said I was going to do last time, I went and I laminated the copies of my character sheets so that they could be reused with a dry erase marker. So, we're going to be using that. And uh, relatively easy to do if you get it. Uh, those pads have 20, and I know you can print off your own copies. I will tell you this much. If you print off the copies from the internet and you have a black and white printer, you do miss out something. Many of the character sheets have um, different uh, powers that are activated with different dice, and uh, having it in color is a huge advantage. So uh, using the dry erase markers on a laminated... Uh, character sheet is, is a nice way of using your resources that you have. So, uh, Siegfried had attained four points of experience, three micro experience, uh, and he'd survived. As far as his gear, he walked away. If you remember last time, he had chainmail armor, a wooden ring, a charm of protection, a great sword, and a battle axe, all level one. At level two, he had a guillotine potion, an axe of renewal, a fire bow, a meteor javelin, plate armor, short sword, and long sword. And at third level, we had actually scored a couple advanced treasures, the gloves of fast hands, and the javelin. So, in the dungeon, you can carry as much as you want. There's no limit. Um, no upward or downward limit. You start out with your starting equipment to start, and then after that, everything you can find, you can carry. And I apologize early on. My cat is a bit affection-starved because uh, we were gone for the weekend. So if she makes a special appearance, we'll just bear with it as best we can. But, uh, so we have all these treasures. When you set out to the dungeon again, to the next uh, step of the story, you can only carry six items with you. Uh, so we're going to have to pare down some of this equipment we have. In addition, we also have a limit that we can only use a level of experience item equal to the level that we're in. Now, when Siegfried levels up and he gets some new skills, if I can get a level two skill, we'll start out as a second level adventurer and suddenly second level gear makes sense to have for starting equipment. We're not in that stage yet. So any second level gear 
I'm not going to be able to use. I can only carry it um, waiting to get to second level. Uh, so it's just dead weight. So I have to make sure that my starting gear is going to include such things that I would need at level one to keep me alive. For me, that would be my suit of chainmail armor, which was a step up from that leather armor we were carrying. As far as weapons go, I had a battle axe. Nice weapon. The uh, nice thing was it stops opponents' counterattacks. I also had the great sword, which, with a lack of a better weapon, I think I'll go with. The red die is intoxicating in how much damage that it can do. And with that, any bams would give me an extra point of damage. I didn't have any shields or anything, so that didn't help much. Also, I don't think I have any abilities that are operated with BAMs on defense. So the wooden ring isn't as useful to me as it might have been, uh, which would automatically give me a defensive BAM. There are times that could be useful, but not to me at this level and right now. The charm of protection on defense, I can reroll an opponent's attack roll, is extremely useful for taking away those successful strikes of an opponent. Um, Carrying another melee weapon doesn't make a great deal of sense to me. So those could be seen as sacrificial. I might keep the battle axe just in case I need a, uh, I find a two weapon combo that beats the greatsword, however. All these level two things, the axe of renewal, allowing me to heal is such a useful weapon. I'm probably gonna carry that with me. I choose melee more than anything else. Um, especially with uh, the ability down the road uh, to be able to do uh, extra fighting and melee and getting special abilities. So fire bow, meteor javelin, wonderful weapons, but just not what I'm looking for. The plate armor is wonderful armor at second level. If I carry that, I'm going to have to consider a sprint to get to second level just so I can start using all this stuff. Likewise, that long sword, one extra blue defensive die. If I can get to second level, I'm instantly throwing down three blue dice for defense. Uh, and two reds and one yellow, that's just not fair to start out with. The rest of the things, the guillotine potion is nice, but not essential. So I think starting out with those two for armor and weapon, and then those four items together makes the rest of this stuff. Uh, again, the Glove of Fast Hands is a nice item. Is it worth having a better weapon or better armor? Not really to me, because I expect to fight a lot. And the Javelin is, again, a nice weapon. Two red dice for attack. could be used at range zero in melee. But it's just not, uh, not the thing I'd really want to carry around. Uh, not so important for my character. So these items are expendable. So in the market phase, uh, once the quest is met, your party comes back to town to rest and heal up. So you draw, to show the market phase, you draw a treasure, uh, as, as many level one treasures as there are number of heroes, that's me, so that's one, a lesser healing potion, nice. Draw as many cards as the number of heroes, that's that, and uh, as many cards as the number of heroes from the treasure of the same level as the lowest level hero. Well, I'm level one, so that's another one. Mage's Charm. Once per activation, roll one yellow die and deal wounds equal to the number of successful attacks on one enemy in line of sight. Uh... It's a little bit of blasting ability, which is nice, and it deals wounds, which is also nice. I uh, just don't see sacrificing anything else I have for that. Oh, and then draw one card for each hero equal to their respective level. So I draw one level one card for that. So these are the things that are in the market. Trade. I can trade equipment for equipment. I could discard one equipment from my inventory to get one from the town market. Well, I'll immediately get rid of the chainmail armor to take the plate armor. The plate armor has the same number of blue dice, but it's an automatic success, one extra success for defense, which is better than just getting an extra success if you get a BAM. Uh, 
So that's easy. That's not a hard decision at all. Also, I could, well, here's the other option though. I do have the chainmail, which isn't bad, but the other thing that I can do, keeping my chainmail, I can trade equipment for uh, experience. I can discard one equipment card from my inventory to get half of its level rounded up in experience points, not micro experience points, real experience points. So, it might have made a little bit more sense to transmogrify some of those level two items. But what I could do is I can trade in this javelin. It's level three. That'll give me two real points of experience. And I think I'm going to do that. And there's a reason for this. By going up two points, I can spend those experience points. I can spend five and get a new ability. Which I think I would take. Hmm, I have three options. I have charge, which means I can move and attack at the same time. Very useful if you are um, maneuverability challenged. Brutality, on BAMs on attack, the defender loses a blue die in defense. That's got its uses. For the same reason I like to, the mace in the beginning. Anything that stops your opponents from ignoring parts of your attack is good. And then bloodlust. Bloodlust means I, I take a point of damage willingly uh, to do one wound in melee to an opponent. Uh, my character actually benefits from taking damage. So I will spend my five points and I will pick up Bloodlust for that Javelin. So that's good. I feel like I've accomplished something. I've, got a, I've gotten a skill out of this. Um, and then, at the end of the Town Market phase, all heroes are fully healed? Yes. All heroes can trade and reorganize their inventory for free? Yeah, we're good where we're at. Each hero must leave the town market with no more than six items in his inventory, including no more than one artifact. Any excess is discarded, and in case a hero only has high-level cards, they can trade out for starting equipment. Well, I'm not taking any of these, because I already made my decision to get experience. And I'm going to have to just give away all the rest of my gear. Uh, well, I might find it in the dungeon again. But I'm starting out... My character strategy is I'm pretty decent at first level compared to a starting character, but now I have Bloodlust on my side and uh, some nice weapons once I hit level 2. And at the end of this, uh, we'll be setting up for the very first story mode cam uh, campaign scenario, uh, which is called Scorched Earth. And we'll be playing through that with you. Uh, so this is the layout. This is how I got there. Uh, join me, won't you, in the next video, whereby we take on the darkness again in Scorched Earth. Again, I am Omnisai. He is Siegfried, and we will see you in Massive Darkness. Farewell. As a quick addendum, uh, after rereading the rules, which is always a good idea, uh, I said that I was able to trade in an item of experience once, which I did, my javelin, but I can also trade out an item for another piece of equipment. So I am going to carry through with the trade the chainmail armor for the plate armor. So when we go with Siegfried, he'll be clad in plate mail armor and carrying a greatsword. Just to allay any confusion, once again, still on the side. Thank you for watching. Farewell.